Hello and welcome to This Week in Agriculture, a presentation of the Communications Unit, Ministry of Agriculture. On this week's presentation, we focus on the activities of Agriculture Minister Zulfikar Mustafa. Again, it's been a rainy week in Georgetown and across the country, and flooding has been a problem in some of those areas. The uh, Minister has been out and about checking on the pumps and so on, ensuring that everything is in working order. He had cause to note that the uh, pump stations and pump operators in the city have been dropping the ball, uh, either because of, of lack of interest or perhaps they are. Uh, there is a shortage of pump operators in the city. So this is one of the issues that will be addressed um, immediately, as it were. Uh, Minister Mustafa also traveled to Bartika. We will hear all about um, his trips um, to Region 7 and the interaction he has been having uh, with farmers there and in the riverine communities of uh, Region 7. So we'll hear all about that on this week's edition of This Week in Agriculture. Farmers and the members of the public in general are being advised that tampering with drainage and irrigation structures in any way is prohibited under the Drainage and Irrigation Act. So too are practices that result in damage to access dams, such as using an inadequate length of tube to irrigate farmlands, resulting in erosion of the earthen dams. Also contrary to the Drainage and Irrigation Act is the practice of erecting structures or planting on government reserves. This will not be condoned. These reserves are to be clear at all times to provide access for the excavation of the channels. Livestock farmers should also be aware that they are liable for any damages caused by their cattle or swine to dams or reserves alongside DNI channels, as is the case when the animals cross these channels. Individuals wishing to erect bridges across DNI structures should first contact the NDIA before doing so. Those found guilty under the Act are liable to fines and imprisonment for up to three months. A message from the National Drainage and Irrigation Authority, Ministry of Agriculture. Over the last 10 years, seed treatment has been proven to be very effective in protecting rice plants from damage by early season pests, such as water weevils, leaf miners, and caterpillars. This protection can last for up to 30 days. In so doing, it allows for better establishment of the rice plants and later, no bare spots in the field. Seed treatment also negates the need for using harmful pesticides during the first 30 days of the crop and therefore allows the buildup of beneficial insects, such as the ladybird beetle, damselflies, dragonflies, and spiders which will later prove useful against paddy bugs at every stage of their life cycle. Seed treatment involves the application of piperonil at 20% soluble concentrate in a spray can to germinate its seed. The mix is 1 liter of piperonil to 2.5 gallons of water to treat 10 120 pound bags of paddy. This can be done manually as seen here. The seed is spread on a level surface and the chemical applied using a spray can. It is then turned and sprayed a few times until the farmer is satisfied that he has achieved complete wetting of his seed paddy. Treated seed paddy is then covered and allowed to be incubated or pressed for the normal 36 to 48 hours. Then it is ready for sowing. It should be noted that in treating the seed, farmers applying the pesticide should wear the appropriate protective gear as seen here to protect against the harmful effects of the chemical on the skin or if inhaled. From 2010 since I start my seed treatment, that's when I started and uh, have uh, continued I've never stopped because I've seen the benefit of seed treatment. And I've seen increased yield, I've seen production better because it actually gives you 35 to 40 days that you don't have to go back into the field and do any kind of a pesticide control because that actually helps you. So farmers, I'm advising you and I'm giving you that advice because I've been doing this since 2010 and I'd like to see farmers uh, benefit also from these Six point. Seed treatment is a critical step in the realization of higher yield. If you have not yet adopted this practice, try it this crop. A message from the GRDB, Ministry of Agriculture. Here's an important notice. 
Do you know that it is illegal to import, store, distribute, sell, and purchase antibiotics without a license or prescription, as the case may be? According to the Antibiotic Act of 1952, owners of livestock and other animals are not permitted to purchase and use antibiotics unless prescribed by a veterinarian. It should be noted that the misuse of antibiotics could result in the development of resistance to the very antibiotic, which in turn will pose health risks to the animal and to humans. The GLDA advises that farmers should not administer antibiotics to animals unless prescribed by a veterinarian. Non-compliance with this act will result in fines and imprisonment, a message from the Guyana Livestock Development Authority, Ministry of Agriculture. Government has turned its agriculture development spotlight on Region 7, Kayuni Mazaruni. With Agriculture Minister Zofika Musifa taking the message of government's plan for agriculture development to several communities within that region, the outreach to Region 7 began on Wednesday with a community meeting at Bartika, which saw attendance by residents of Bartika and the surrounding areas. On Thursday, the outreach continued with meetings in the riverine communities of Riversview, Carrow Creek, Cartabo, and Batavia. While Bartica and the region in general is not known as a major agriculture-producing area, the business of agriculture in Region 7 has slowly been gaining momentum. While Bartica and the region in general is not known as a major agriculture-producing area, the business of agriculture in Region 7 has slowly been gaining momentum, with several residents engaging in livestock farming, cash crop farming, as well as the cultivation of permanent crops. During his meeting at the Bartika Community Center Wednesday, Minister Mustafa outlined government's plan for agriculture development there, stressing that every single region is earmarked to receive the same level of support as the other, without exception. The agriculture minister, who had earlier listened to presentations by residents on challenges they are facing in their pursuit of enrichment through agriculture and the help that they are looking to government for, expressed his satisfaction at the fact that farmers of the region are interested in engaging in modern forms of agriculture, such as using shade houses, and in accessing genetic improvements to their livestock, through the services provided by the Guyana Livestock Development Authority, an agency of the Ministry of Agriculture. Minister Mustafa laid out for the residents present at the Bodic Community Center meeting that in order to devise a strategy for addressing the needs of farmers in the region, an assessment of those needs will begin immediately. So, comrades, the issues that you all raised are not new issues, are issues that are common around the country, and that what we have been working with and working with farmers around the country to resolve. As a matter of fact, when I became minister, I started a program. I don't know if Nari sent it here, but I started a program where I've instructed that all the Akushi and baits be given free to farmers so that they can use the Akushi and bait to treat their farm. And we'll make that, I want to tell you, we'll make that available to you. And I will ensure Nari do that. All the baits for Akushi and will have that. But I can't come and say that, look, I will give you a tiller, or give you a tiller, or tell you I will give you so much of drugs, or tell you that I will give you a, 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 a fog machine, or a bongo pump. I have to do an analysis first. We have to do an analysis, and we can't give individual. We have to give to the community so that the community can run it and utilize it. Because many times, Many times we give to individual to control it. One and two persons only take the, you get the use of it. And the community don't get it used. So what I will do, I want to make a commitment that for this Region 7, we will send a team from the GLDA and NARI to do an assessment within one week. I will make two tillers available for Region 7. Two tillers available for Region 7. So the farmers will have that to use. And we'll have a management committee to control those. We'll have, we'll have about five, I don't know if you know the bongo pump what we're using. We'll have about five bongo pump and one motorized um, fogging machine, one fogging machine. That will be in the region so that we can give the support to the farmers around the region. 
and we'll have community use it on a need, on a needs basis. So we'll have that. But the other things we'll have the um, Nari. We have the head of Nari here, Mr. Jack Narain Singh, and we have the head of GLDA, Dr. Wal um, Waldron, Dr. Dwight Waldron. We have the head of the NDIA here who will look at the entire drainage system to see what we can do. Those comrades who reported that the farms are flooded out, then we have to do an analysis. So Mr. Lionel will do a visit with his team to see if we can do some empoldering, help farmers individually. In terms of, in terms of fertilizer and insecticide, we'll look at it to see how, how much we can help. We can't help every single person. We can only give so much help. And we will give you the support. We will give you the seeds that you, are, you needed to plant. We'll give you all make seeds available. As a matter of fact, I asked them to walk with some seeds today so that they could start sharing it out and give some of you all who need do kitchen garden. So at least you could collect your seed today. Right? So we'll start that today. And the other thing is, as soon as the analysis is done, then we'll make a decision to know what more help we can do. The Agriculture Minister also urged the residents of Bartica and surrounding areas to change the way they go about their farming activities, taking into account the modern way of conducting the business of agriculture, ensuring that they farm with the weather in mind, employing the various forms of climate-smart agriculture, and moving away from subsistence farming to more commercial size operations. We have to change the mindset. For example, this area here is an area that we can do a lot of root crops. Things like cassava, sweet potato, and we can work along with you. We can work along with you to develop a processing facility. I was in Barbados with the president not so long ago at the AgroFest. The AgroFest. And in Barbados, they want the cassava flour they need it very badly. And we are the only country in the Caribbean that can supply them with cassava flour. There's a ready market there. So we can work along with you. I can have the new GMC to work along with you. We can purchase some cassava mill and help the farmers. As a matter of fact, I donated about 50 cassava mill to the farmers in Region 9 so that they can use the cassava mill and get the cassava flour. We can help you to package it. Package it and make it attractive and find market for you in the Caribbean. So we must take out this mindset that, you know, as soon as we get little crops, we go to the market. We've got to change the way we're doing things. The world is changing. And we can't continue to do subsistence farming and we can't continue to do farming that we used to do 20 years ago. We have to change the way, as I said. Those comrades, those farmers who wants to do shade houses, we will work with you. As long as you can provide the framing, we will try to help you to get the plastic so that we can help you to do shade house. I will ensure that an extension, an extension officers from NARI visit this area here, and not one a few extension officers from NARI and GLDA visit this area once monthly so that they will meet with you and give you the necessary guidance so that you can plant, know how to plant your farm and also at the same time know how to wear your livestock and see how they could treat your livestock. Right, Dr. Waldron will be tasked with that to ensure, I don't know if we have officers in Region 7, but we'll be working with you all to ensure that we do, do that, those things. On Thursday, June 23, Minister Mustafa and his high-level team of department heads and technical officers of his ministry returned to Region 7, Kayuni Mazaruni, for meetings with residents of the riverine communities of Riversview, Karao Creek, Kartabu, and Batavia. His first stop was at the community of Riversview, where he told residents of the PPPC government's commitment to ensuring that its actions and development is without 
empty promises, but more an approach that seeks to first understand the needs of the various communities across the country, and then to devise interventions that are sound and progressive, especially as it relates to agriculture development. We want you, yes, we'll find market for your produce. We'll find market for your fish. I will ensure that a team come back here next week to help the farmers to find market for their produce and also for those fishes that you are catching and you're not getting market for. We are now moving because in, under the Ministry of Agriculture, we have a number of agencies, right? We have NARI, I only brought two with me here this morning, NARI and GLDA. We have the NDIA and I will send the NDIA back to look at the, what Mr. Douglas talk about this diagram that he should give me just now to look to see how we can have drainage, proper drainage for this community, right? We have the GMC, the Guyana Marketing Cooperation, that has responsibility for marketing, to come to meet with you to get market for your produce. I will ask them that they visit this area and have to, a discussion with you all. So next week I am sending back, next week I am sending back a team. I am sending back a team to this area so that I can work along with you all. Residents of Rippers View in Region 7 had earlier made a number of requests relative to the provision of river defense infrastructure and basic drainage infrastructure in their communities, help with the provision of cash grants or hampers, access to loans for farmers, etc., help which was promised by the Agriculture Minister. I want to tell, um, tell you that we'll be moving. So, for example, the flood issue that you all raised, I will send back the head of NDIA, Mr. Lionel Wordsworth, together with the team to look to see a design that we can do here. And I don't promise you that I can send a machine and give you all here. What we'll do, we'll see the needs of the community and we'll bring a machine to do the work and take it back because we need a machine to take all over the place. Right, I understand, comrades. So we'll look at it. If this is a feasible diagram that the comrade draw that he showed that he want two canals with a road, then Mr. Wordsworth will come and look at it and we'll get a machine to do it so that we can get the drainage done for your community. The comrade talk about cash transfer, the comrade, the deputy to show, talk about cash transfer or hampers. Well, we have been given, I made it so, a number of points. You'll get 25, this is a riverine community, so you'll get $25,000 shortly. So you'll get a cash uh, uh, relief. You understand, comrade Tusho, deputy Tusho. And loan. When the president was in Bartika, he called the Demerara Bank. They are willing to give loan to the value of 3.5% annually interest. 1.5 One up to $1.5 million. You're not going to get collateral. You know why it's collateral? You're not going to get transport or, or thing to take to guarantee your loan. You go, they go fill out the farm, you're up to $1.5 million. If you pay it out one year, only 3.5% you're going to pay interest. If you want to get two, three years, then every year you're going to pay 3.5% interest. Very low interest rate. And you all take the opportunity. And we can help you facilitate you to talk to the bank. <laughs> right? So it's simple as that. It's simple as that. Before time, you've got to get a lot of collateral, like transport, or somebody guarantee the loan for you, or Bell give you a certificate for your hotel if you go back to get the loan or something. <laughs> so all those things you, got, you have to get before. And now you've got to get that. you got Comrade Ward, you got Comrade Bell, you got all these comrades. Um, Comrade Narisa, you got Joss, all of them can help you all. I ho know that it comes normally, regularly here. So let us ensure that we take the opportunity that we have. As part of the overall initiative by the Ministry of Agriculture, Minister Mustafa told residents that different categories of livestock and cash crops will soon be made available to their community free of cost. What I will do, I will see how we can help the community with some livestock and a number of crops. A number of crops. <laughs> right? I, we cannot give individual livestock, because I mean, if I give an individual livestock, the whole country will want. So I will help the community, the village to get some, and you all decide how you will utilize it. Decide how the farmers in the community will utilize it, and I will ensure that Nari provide a number of seed free of cost, a number of plants free of cost, all the Akushi and Zbet free of cost, 
right? So we'll do that. So Nari will do that when they come next week. They'll uh, start do that. I will come back a day to do all these presentations. And I'll also give two meals, one to follow out, one to Riverview. Cassava Two cassava meal. <laughs> so the auntie wouldn't, uh, you'll get the cassava meal to grind it. But that'll go into the community, not individual. Yeah. So anybody in the community can use it. So we'll give two cassava meal. <laughs> As I said, comrades, we have to work together. The community will also be provided with a shade house in fulfillment of the request by residents. Across at Carrow Creek, Minister Mustafa commended residents for their interest in pursuing agriculture development and expansion to bolster their traditional sources of income from mining and logging. Very happy that although you continue to do mining and logging and things like that, you want to embark on agriculture. And I'm here to support you all to ensure that we work together to develop the agriculture sector in this community. So, a number of issues were raised, and I think first of all, before we can <coughs> deal with it in a way that you want it to deal with, we have to first of all find out and analyze how we can deal with it. Because you would have mentioned that you want to embark on a number of um, activities, agricultural activities. Somebody, some people want to go into poultry, some want to go into different crops, some want to go continue the fishing, but then we have to do an analysis to find out how the community, community can benefit and what is best for the community. And as a government, we recognize the importance of agriculture. That is why we are here, and we have been moving across, Mr. Comrade Ramraj would have told you, that we, over the last 22 months, we have visited a number of communities across our country. And we have been working with a number of communities to develop the agriculture sector in our country. And your community will also receive those kind of help that we have been given across the country. I have just came from Riverview, and we have um, people from Palmouth and Riverview. And we have discuss a number of issues that are affecting those communities and the Ministry of Agriculture will make intervention to help the community and help the farmers in those communities. Likewise here, we'll continue to work with you. As was the case in the other communities, the Agriculture Minister promised his ministry support in the provision of free planting materials and livestock. Poultry farmers of the community of Karao Creek were also promised black giant chicks to advance their production of eggs and meat. Across the other communities visited by the minister and his team, the message was the same. Assurances of government's unwavering support in the resolution of the various issues affecting the communities, as well as help in advancing their agriculture pursuits and agriculture development in general. On Wednesday, July 22, Minister Zulfikar Mustafa represented His Excellency President Dr. Irfan Ali at the funeral of the late Sheikh Nizamuddin of Windsor Forest, West Coast Demerara. Sheikh Nizamuddin was known to be a kind and thoughtful man who believed in helping people. The Ministry of Agriculture extends sincere sympathies to the family of the late Sheikh Nizamuddin. And finally, on Friday last, Minister Mustafa received a courtesy call from the Honorable Senator Lorenzo Harewood of the Barbados Parliament at his Regent Street office. Commenting on the visit, Minister Mustafa noted that the visit was part of the continued efforts to strengthen the relations and collaboration between the two countries within their respective agriculture sectors.
Over the last 10 years, seed treatment has been proven to be very effective in protecting rice plants from damage by early season pests, such as water weevils, leaf miners, and caterpillars. This protection can last for up to 30 days. In so doing, it allows for better establishment of the rice plants and later, no bare spots in the field. Seed treatment also negates the need for using harmful pesticides during the first 30 days of the crop and therefore allows the buildup of beneficial insects, such as the ladybird beetle, damselflies, dragonflies, and spiders which will later prove useful against paddy bugs at every stage of their life cycle. Seed treatment involves the application of piperonil at 20% soluble concentrate in a spray can to germinated seed. The mix is 1 liter of piperonil to 2.5 gallons of water to treat 10 120 pound bags of paddy. This can be done manually as seen here. The seed is spread on a level surface and the chemical applied using a spray can. It is then turned and sprayed a few times until the farmer is satisfied that he has achieved complete wetting of his seed paddy. Treated seed paddy is then covered and allowed to be incubated or pressed for the normal 36 to 48 hours. Then it is ready for sowing. It should be noted that in treating the seed, farmers applying the pesticide should wear the appropriate protective gear as seen here to protect against the harmful effects of the chemical on the skin or if inhaled. From 10 to 10 since I start my seed treatment, that's when I started and uh, have uh, continued I've never stopped because I've seen the benefit of seed treatment. And I've seen increased yield, I've seen production better because it actually gives you 35 to 40 days that you don't have to go back into the field and do any kind of a pesticide control because that actually helps you. So farmers, I'm advising you and I'm giving you that advice because I've been doing this since 2010 and I'd like to see farmers uh, benefit also from these Six point. Seed treatment is a critical step in the realization of higher yield. If you have not yet adopted this practice, try it this crop. A message from the GRDB Ministry of Agriculture. Here's an important notice. Do you know that it is illegal to import, store, distribute, sell, and purchase antibiotics without a license or prescription, as the case may be? According to the Antibiotic Act of 1952, owners of livestock and other animals are not permitted to purchase and use antibiotics unless prescribed by a veterinarian. It should be noted that the misuse of antibiotics could result in the development of resistance to the very antibiotic, which in turn will pose health risks to the animal and to humans. The GLDA advises that farmers should not administer antibiotics to animals unless prescribed by a veterinarian. Non-compliance with this act will result in fines and imprisonment. A message from the Guyana Livestock Development Authority, Ministry of Agriculture. Region 5, West Burmese, is the largest single contributor to Guyana's rice production annually, with some 45% of national production. Region 5 is also the largest contributor of beef and other meats from animals reared on lands in that region. All lands in Region 5 fall under the purview of the Mahaika Maikonia Bari Agricultural Development Authority, MMA ADA, an agency of the Ministry of Agriculture. In recognition of the importance of its role in the production levels of the region, the Ministry of Agriculture has been expanded millions on not only rehabilitating the neglected DNI structures and dams, but has been retooling the entity with millions in excavators and other equipment and tools for the work ahead. The completion of Phase 2 begins this year and has been catered for in the 2021 national budget. Agriculture Minister Zofika Mustafa says the MMA is key to doubling rice production in five years. The future for agriculture in Guyana is exciting. Let's all play our part. A message from the MMA Ministry of agriculture. Well, that's all the time we have on this week's edition of This Week in Agriculture, a presentation of the Communications Unit, Ministry of Agriculture. I'm your producer and host, Christopher Holder. Remember, as you go ahead with your farming plans, ensure that you look at the weather, check the weather forecast, go to hydromet.gov.gy Check out the three-day, uh, one-week, three-month forecast and, of course, be advised on how you can proceed. All right? Until next time, then, be good to yourselves and to each other.